Okay, good evening everybody. This is Ginger Cook in Houston, Texas. Wanting to wish you a wonderful evening. We're going to have a blast painting tonight. This is our Tuesday 7.30 uh, Central Time, Texas Time live painting class. And we're just, uh, now look, you don't have to paint with us. You can just watch and just uh, chat with the group. And people are going to be asking questions. And you're going to be able to do that because our good friend and partner John Little is on the other end of this nifty iPhone. And he is in Studio B. I am Studio A for Awesome, and John is in Studio B for Bear. And even though we are in the same building, he's far enough away to make this work. And then if he can't answer the question, he tells it to me via these earphones, and then I tell it to you. And I'll try to repeat the question. Sometimes you'll see little silences while I'm waiting for him to relay it. I, I, sometimes there'll be this kind of little dead space, and sorry about that, but I have to listen to what he's saying, make sure I understand the question. So last night, we, so we do this Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday afternoons. Last night, what we did was we really got down to blending. We talked about, now this is up on, on YouTube right now, and we talked about how to take just, you know, ordinary acrylics, no mediums at all, you guys, no mediums, and if you were lucky enough to you know, catch this live. If not, don't worry about it. It's up there. Please watch this. This will make your life ever so much simpler. If you're struggling with acrylics and blending acrylics, this is absolutely, the, you know, the best video for you because I show you like four different ways to kind of do it, do it with different colors. And then even we did one with blending medium, and then I showed you how to glaze over it and change the color. So this is a very important lesson. And why did we go to all that trouble to do that? Was well, because tonight we're going to paint this nifty umbrella. Huh. Oh, how cool is this, right? So, and please notice all the blending that's happening in this umbrella. So, I didn't want you to have feel like you had to struggle to get that to happen. And uh, and then tomorrow, we're going to be painting. I'm going to give you a preview. No one has seen this, not even on Facebook. Tomorrow, we're going to be painting this little scene, this little garden scene, and we're going to be blending this tablecloth. But these little blending schools are going to come in very handy, okay? So... That'll be Wednesday afternoon at 1 p.m. is what we're going to be painting this live. And uh, and again, we're going to be talking about blending. So what we want to do now is get out some colors. And you'll notice I have them written on the plate in these little nifty stickers. And I went to that because we discovered that it was easier than you reading my funny handwriting, which got stranger as time went on. So, uh, you know, I'm just going to go around the plate. We're going to put a little ultramarine blue. We're going to probably throw more of this paint away than we use. We're not putting too much out. We're doing a little canvas, 6 by 8 so it's going to be small. And, you know, th though I think this would be quite stunning, large. Really, I think this would be big, large. You know, kind of a long, skinny canvas, maybe make the umbrella a little longer. Might be real pretty, you know, kind of a long, tall one. Uh, and this is a, a definitely a, a painting for artists, isn't it? I mean, with the, with the umbrella and everything, and all the colors. And I feel like that these are, it's almost like a palette in an umbrella. So we're going to start with tad yellow medium. And then we want yellow oxide. Yellow oxide is kind of a gold color. So as we're putting out this paint, this has been a really fun day. I've had a really good day. And I'm trying to think, why was it a good day? Well, let's see, what went on today? Um... Yeah, but do we really want to? Yeah, I guess we could talk about that a little bit. I don't know if we want to talk about that. But can I talk about what? What are they saying? They're talking about secret things, just the two of them, secret stuff. You know, it's um, you know, sometimes you have your life together in some areas, and sometimes in other areas, it's not so quite together. And apparently, um, this summer, the area that my life was not together was the pool. And it, uh, the pool is too nice a word for it. I think green swamp was the word we were looking for here. So when John came down, he said, why do you have a green swamp? I said, I don't know. Tried everything. This is just what's happened. And uh, this is sort of the thing. And he said, you know, you, we could drain it. I said, that's a thought. How would you do that? So John uh, drained the pool and took a power washer and powered it out and found all the strange things hiding in there. Uh, it, it, you, it, 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 at, an, at an inch deep, you couldn't see the bottom. We're not kidding. It was, a, it was a challenge. And there wasn't enough chemicals in the world to fix this. And anyway, so it got drained, and now we are in the process. And maybe if there's a little bit of summer left here in Houston, it's still like 98 degrees, maybe we can make this work so that we can actually 
um, go swimming. The, the summer was a real bust. Um, so, all right, gauzy purple was a, the next one we like. We, I really love this color. If you're not using this color, so I, I got to hand it to John. We were out there at midnight, um, power washing the pool and making the pump work on it. Well, I say we. I was uh, sitting on the edge of the pool cheering John on as he was in there cleaning it. But, you know, I didn't make him do it alone. I mean, I'm going, yay, you know, this kind of stuff. Right? Looks good. I see. Got that green spot right over there. Awesome. You know, and I was thinking that the neighbors were going to kill us for all the noise we were making. But that's okay. That's just too bad, right? They were. So, all right. Now, here's the color we're talking about for this umbrella. It's magenta. And uh, there's a real pool saga to me. And someday I'll tell you the saga of this pool that's gone on for 20 years, this pool. And every, you know. Uh, anyway, it's okay. Um, now, cad, cad, um, cad, let's see, that was, oh yeah, cad yellow light. Here's a color I'm going to introduce to you. This is called cadmium yellow light. Now, you would think if you put white, I'm just going to share this thought with you. If you put white with cad yellow medium, you would get cad yellow light. Doesn't that make sense to you? Wouldn't you think that would be true? It's not. So I'm going to just show you what this does. This is a, you don't use this very often, but when you want it, you really want it. And this is a color you cannot mix, cad yellow light. Now, if you don't have it, just add white to the cad yellow medium. Don't sweat it. It's not going to make that big a difference, but we're going to show you anyway what it does. And then we're going to do a little mixing white. We'll add that later, but we definitely want the titanium white now. So, and yeah, phthalo blue. We want phthalo blue. So this is already kind of a rainbow palette, isn't it? Kind of two rows of, of white here like that. And then we had to, to um, rush back to Home Depot. We rented a pump from Home Depot to drain the pool. And then we had to rush back to get it back by 4 o'clock. And then John had a scheduled meeting on YouTube to listen to, I don't know, you were listening to something, analytics or something, a special thing we'd signed up for a class on analytics. And isn't it nice that someone wants to watch that? Because I don't. <laughs> just, just isn't that great? This is, this is the nice thing about having, you know, having a two-person team here, you know? It's just, a, oh, you want to watch the stuff on analytics? Awesome. Yay. Oh, gosh, that's great. I love that. What did they say? Anything I should know just in 10 seconds? Anything 10 seconds or less you can explain? I'm all ears, right? So, okay, sorry. Just gets a little funny after a while. Okay, so then, backing this up a little bit, okay? So you can see, look at the colors. It's all, almost there. Okay, so now we're going to take one of these little tablet things. People say, where do you get this? This is real canvas. And um, this is, I repeat this, but there's like 10 sheets. I'm down to the last sheet. And i got to tell you something kind of neat. Well, I guess i got one more. The very back of this is really thick cardboard. I mean, really thick. If you save these, you can glue your picture on here and then put it in a frame. I always save these, the ends of these. If you're not doing that, you should. Because you can just glue those on. All right, so now you'll notice that what we're going to do is we're going to paint a purple background first. That is imperative. We need to paint a purple background before we do any drawing or anything and dry it. Sure, I have a question. Cerulean blue is an interesting blue. It's uh, if you I have an Adventures in Blue on YouTube, and you can look at we'll see what all the blues do. I find that if you mix ultramarine blue and phthalo blue and white in different amounts, you get sort of a cerulean. You get sometimes a um, cobalt. You can you can vary the shades. You can get a lot of those shades of blue just by with these two. Okay, but my best thing is to just if you really want to see it, watch that Adventures in Blue I've got on YouTube. It's free. It's up there. I went through every tube of blue in the art store and said, what do these do? Because everybody ends up with their sort of their favorite colors, okay? And um, pretty much I've been uh, using these forever, and it works pretty well. I can pretty much make all the blues out of this close enough, okay? Um, depends on what you're painting. Okay, so here we are. We've got this. Now, let's take um, let's take a large brush. And uh, let's just be the last of the big spenders here and scoop up some paint. I'm not going to wet the brush, but I'm going to grab some Dosne purple. All right, I'm going to stick it here. And then I'm going to get, see, nothing too fancy. And then I'm going to get a little white. 
and stick it here. Little tiny bit of cad yellow medium, tiny little bit right there. Uh, what do we got? All right, let's just try those. All right, let's just blend all that in like that. Uh, let's get a little more purple. There we go. Just that yellow will um, kind of to push back the purple so it's not so bright. This is a little brown, so I'm going to add a bit of magenta to it. Let's see what happens if I do that. That's pretty. How about some ultramarine blue? That's good. Let's grab some of that. Oh, that's pretty. See what stuff does. Have fun mixing some colors. Up. Don't get too much yellow because it goes a little brown on you. And I really didn't want it to be brown. Now, if it goes brown, then I have to add ultramarine blue. That'll fix that. Red and blue make purple. So I can add a little bit of ultramarine blue and kind of turn this purple again. Just all these little tricks. Nice to know, right? It's like, for instance, you know, when you're um, cooking, if you get too much salt in your food, you know you can peel a, like say spaghetti sauce, somebody just dumped too much salt in it. You can take an apple and slice it up and put it in the in the spaghetti and big chunks of it, and it will absorb all the salt, take it out of the food so it doesn't taste so salty. All right, that's the kind of thing I'm talking about, okay? Now, let's take a little white now while we're here, and I'm just going to come around, use the side of my brush like this, very gently, and I'm just going to sort of squiggle in some sort of interesting... Supposed to kind of feel like, you know, maybe you're looking out through a window. I don't want to get real detailed, but maybe some sort of rainy stuff going on here like this. A little bit of white. We'll just kind of use the, use this whole side of the brush very gently. We're just, we're just going to kind of spread some color around here like that. It's, sort of, it's almost like scribbling, really. It's very close. to kind of at an angle. And um, let's see what else could I put. Yeah, that's pretty good. Maybe I'll take a little bit of ultramarine blue and white. If I've got any left. Put a little of that too, like this. All right, just, oh, something like that. That's good. Just, there we go. And we can add some more of this later if we want, but there we go. This is sort of the, kind of at an angle. Just give it a little movement. And it's just, no two are going to look the same. Then we got to dry it, okay? No, no two of these will look the same, but we've got enough of a basis where we can do our umbrella, okay? And that's what we're looking for, just something we can do the umbrella with. And all right, so now we have to dry all this. Okay, that's it. now we're going to dry everything. So, John, do we have any questions before we dry? We're clear to dry. Okay, so I'm going to just take a ruler here to force the air back. A big piece of cardboard would be good. A box isn't bad either because that really forces the air on your picture. But let's just, I'm going to put this on high blast heat, and then I will finish off with a blast of cold air. But we're going to start, and here we go. One, two, three, dry. with cold air. It's, a little, it's not completely dry, but it's good enough for what we need it to do, okay? Now what we're going to do is we're going to take our ruler and we're going to just, we're going to put this in scientifically. You like that? Yeah, I, I sort of sketched this in freehand and now we're going to just copy what I did. So let's come over here about an inch and a quarter from the bottom and let's put a mark like that. And then I'm going to come up on two inches on this, this left side and put a dot and then I'm going to draw a straight line down like that connecting these two dots which was an inch and a quarter and this was two inches oh that was easy now I'm going to come across here two inches from here at this point to this point is two inches 
That's easy. Now, I'm going to go up here. Oh, gosh, this is working out really well. Look at that. Let me put my glasses on. Make sure I can read it. This ruler <laughs> is so funny. Four and a half inches up on the side. Four and a half and put a little dot up here. A little, little mark right there. And then I've got to go in a quarter of an inch this way. Where my mark go? Here. Okay, like this. Quarter of an inch right here. That's not showing up. The paint's a little soft here. I used just another piece of chalk here. Quarter of an inch. Now I'm going to take my ruler and draw a line like that. Okay, there you go. See? Quarter of an inch. Now let's go up. Let's come down from the top on the right two and a quarter inches. On the right, two and a quarter inches. Put a mark right there. And then we want to come in. Three quarters of an inch, which we can do right there. Put a mark right there. And so we have a little dot there. Now you're going, okay, so now what are we doing? Okay, let's see. I don't know. Let's, let's keep going. Up from the top, three and a half inches from the left hand, right hand side, put a dot. And straight down two and a quarter inches. Straight down two and a quarter and draw a line. Okay, straight down. Hang on, I haven't got that. Uh, cad yellow, uh, I just used a um, cad yellow uh, medium, but very little because I got it actually too brown. I kind of overdid it. Okay, so now I'm going to do a little line like this, kind of a circular line. Let's find a different chalk here. It's just not working for me. Where's Fred here? But Mark here, the zombie. All right, so now I'm going to come over here, um, three quarters of an inch like this and draw a straight line down here like this. Well, let's find a new pastel. Here we go, that's a little bit squared. Okay, so here we go, just straight down like this. All right, so there's our handle, okay? Well, that's good, that's good. So now we know there's the handle. Then I'm gonna come down straight down in the middle of it and make a line like that, which is about um, an inch and a quarter long. Did I get that right? Yeah, about that. Okay, so now, we're going to come over here, two and a half inches, right here, and we're going to go straight up. How far? Oh, surely not that. Five inches, straight up there, five inches. One, two, three, four, five. Would that be right? Yeah, apparently it is. And draw a line straight up here, five inches, like that. Okay, it came up here five inches, like that, drew a line. Can you guys see that? I'm just five inches like that. Do a line. Now um I'm gonna come over a quarter of an inch here and put a little mark right there, about a quarter of an inch. And uh now let's go up here. Okay, come up on this right side, not to get too many marks on you, three inches put a dot, and come in two inches, okay? All right, so now I know that I need this line right like that, okay, right there, okay? And I'm going to take a little loop and then loop this down like this. Just loop this right like that, okay? And I'm going to go about here, about a quarter of an inch from the top of this, and up slightly higher, just go straight down with that, and then loop a little line around here like that, just loop a little curve like that, the curve one, okay? That's good, yeah? And then let's see, let's go right next to this one, it's just really right over here, it starts in the same place, and I want to come up four inches, I think, not quite four, just shy of four inches, put a mark, and I want to come in an inch and a quarter, okay, now, now I've lost, uh, now I'm confused too, I'll say, what, what do we say, four inches up this way, for this one, he said, uh, not quite four, uh-huh, which is, not quite four, which is this one right here, I'm just going to do it on the paper so I can see it, 
Then I said I wanted to come in. Uh, inch and a quarter this way. Yeah, here, right here, okay? Inch and a quarter this way, and I'm going to draw a straight line down here like this. I guess I can use the ruler. Draw a straight line down here like this. All right, like that. There's a straight line. I think I'm going to have to use my chalk here so you can see it. Okay, right like that. So straight line there, okay? Now, we've got a... Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, so now I've got I've got this one, which is basically, remember, it was like an inch and a quarter from here and up. This was up um, not quite four inches. And so what we're going to do is we're going to make another fold that loops here. Maybe I can do it with a, yeah, here, this chalk. It's going to loop right like this. Okay, like this. This is looping back. So now we have to decide where it loops to. So this is where we've got one and a half folds. So now let's figure out where this loops back to. It loops back over here, two and a half inches, and how far down is it? Okay, so come down from the top, two and a quarter, which is, I think we had that already. And then I want to come in um, two and a half, come straight in from that two and a half, and put a mark. That's where it's looping back to right here, two and a half inches here. It's looping back here, okay? So this is looping around here like that, and then you're going to go straight down here like that with this one. Okay, you see that? So we got one loop. So this is a W. Do you see the W? See the W? Okay, just in case you're getting confused by the pattern. And then we've got this one is coming up, this last one here. It's a quarter of an inch from the end, and how far up would we say this one was? Um, we didn't do it yet. Uh, about four and a quarter inches up this way, about four and a quarter inches up this way, and in a little bit, not very far. So uh, about a quarter of an inch, eighth of an inch, and now we're going to come up this way with our last fold, like this. Okay, there's this one. Now you know this is looping down to here, and it's going to loop back. At the, now this is where it gets kind of fun, I'll show you. It loops almost back to itself here, like this. It almost loops back to itself, okay? And then this one here angles down. That last little dot we had angles down and is looping like this. Just loops up here like this and back. And then back down, back, kind of back down here to the, the handle, okay? Back down here to the handle. So that's kind of this side right here. We've got this one this one. So we have one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Okay? On this side. Now we just have to do the other side of the umbrella. Oh boy. Okay, does anybody need any measurements again before I carry on? Anybody need any measurements again? And this would be the yellow, medium orange, dark orange, and magenta. We you need any measurements? This was like a quarter inches, and then this, this whole thing here was like an inch and a quarter here. From the very base or the middle. Now we want to go over um, um, our yellow comes in. Let's see, let's come out here about an inch and an eighth from the uh, an inch and about an inch and an eighth from this edge here. We're gonna right there, right there, it's an inch and an eighth. We're gonna go ahead and draw a line like this. Okay, and now we're going to say we've got a, 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 a curve here. It's almost like a, like a hook coming this way. And then let's find our next um, pattern. I'm just going to kind of ignore this for a minute. Come straight up down like this and then come around. Bring this around. Kind of this is your next fold of straight up and down line like that. Okay. And then up above that, just a little bit, just up from that, you've got another straight line coming down, kind of split the difference between these two. And then you've got this sort of curvy thing. These all, these all come back to each other. This is going to go up like this and down. And let's see, how far down is this one? Uh, 
we'll start from the top here. Three and a quarter inches down from the top. Just come down here three and a quarter, like there. And we're going to say that this one's coming in here. This loop comes up here like this. Okay? So that's... In, this one's going to wrap. It's going to get a little wider here. We're going to wrap this around here a little bit like that. This one ends here. And then behind this umbrella, we're just going to do a few little loops like this. Like behind the umbrella like that. Nothing too, nothing too fancy. Let's get this up a little higher. So it's kind of comes up behind our, um, like little waves here. Two little waves like that. And then we're going to say that this is, bring this down up, up like this. And then this comes out here, and then down, and this comes here. All right, so, all right, that makes sort of sense to me, but made sense to you. All right, and then this is going to bring this out a little bit, this loop. This, uh, the one I liked about this was kind of squared off here. All right, so can I zoom in and we've got a good hot chalk mess here, but... Okay, so I've got, so I want you to see kind of how I laid this out. And then I'm going to say that in the center of this, here's our stick, and in the center of this is our pole right about here. It's coming down. So what could we paint first? What should we paint first? Hard to know, right? Well, you know, you could paint some easy stuff. We could paint some really easy stuff. Let's paint the handle. That's easy. Let's paint the handle. Let's take, uh, this is that blending stuff again. See our handle? See our little handle here that's all blended? So let's do something, uh, let's take a little bit of burnt umber and, um, and a tiny bit of ultramarine blue, which I think I'm, I still have some, right? And I want you to come down here like this and say here's some burnt umber, like that. Let's see, burnt umber, like that. There it goes, nice and dark. Okay, now, wipe the brush on something. Now what we're going to do is we're going to mix Cad red medium, okay, and a little bit of yellow oxide, and a tiny bit of gosling purple, like 1%, and we're going to make this reddish brown color, okay? So then I want to come next to this, like this. This is this sort of bright reddish brown color. I'm going to come next to this, and I have these two stripes, just like we did last night, remember? Now I'm going to wipe the brush, and then I'm going to go across here like this, almost at an angle like this, and I'm just going to kind of fade that dark, rusty, you know, that dark brown shadow color in on this side, like this. Okay. And that's sort of a light pressure. That's a light pressure. Just sort of fade that in. Then I want some yellow right here. Just take a little yellow. You know, maybe I'll add a little yellow here, like that. Just brighten that up a little bit. Maybe a little yellow and cad red medium. Let's make a bright orange color. That'll even be better. Like that. Put a little paint and then just kind of play with that. Now this is real light pressure here. Just wipe the brush off and then just kind of split the difference between the two here. And here's our little handle. Now later we can go back and lighten it, but there's there, that's pretty fast for our little handle. But you want to make sure that the bottom of the handle is rounded here like this. It's just the bottom of this has to be kind of round. Okay? Like that. There's the bottom of our handle. And I may have, and if you got it too wide, now this is not to worry, if you got it too wide, you can turn it sideways like this, and you can take a little bit of the white and the purple color, you can come next to it and skinny it up. I'm just saying that it's, you're not, you're not stuck with anything. Take a little white and a little purple and just come next to it and make it a little bit I'll lighten that up here anyway so it shows up. You know, that old rule, wherever there's a light, there's a dark. See, this handle now kind of shows up now as I lighten it up over here. I'll probably darken it up on that side, lighten it up on this side where the shadow is. Okay, so that was that was the easy part, wasn't it? Oh, good. See, I chose it. This is going to be easy. That's really super easy. Okay, so once we got the silly folds in, that, that was the tricky part. All right, so let's just come around and do something fun here. Let's take some magenta and a little bit of yellow, okay, like a little bit of yellow, and make this sort of bright color, kind of a bright, bright orange color like this, more magenta than anything else. Let's come along here like this, and we're going to say that this little fold right here, this one here, is going to be that color. 
Then I'm going to wipe the brush off and go right into pure magenta. And I'm going to just sort of do the back of this pure magenta behind these folds here. I know, I'm ignore my chalk. My chalk I will wipe off tomorrow and then I'll blend this in with that. So I wanted this a little bit lighter up here. And I want to make sure I've got this at an angle here. So this, this is our fold here, like that. Make sure this is at a sharp angle, that right hand edge. And as I come over toward the center, I'm going to grab a little ultramarine blue. This is the tricky part. There's a lot of blending in this, okay? And how this works is I'll take a little bit of magenta and like 2% ultramarine blue. And as I come toward the middle, I will make this darker. But the ultramarine blue will make magenta darker. I'm going to ignore the little pole here. I certainly know where that goes, so I don't have to do it. Now as I come toward the middle, I'm going to switch, and now I'm into ultramarine blue almost exclusively as I come over here, and I'm going to say that this is our ultramarine blue side of the umbrella, I'm using a little quarter inch um, ruby satin silver angle brush. If you haven't tried these brushes, I can't say enough nice things about them, and my daughter Cinnamon has made it possible for everybody to go to the art guys. Um, art, theartguys.com, and if you put in the art Sherpa, she will, um, it doesn't matter what brush you buy on their site, any old brush that they've got, and they've got some lovely brushes. I mean, there's more brushes in this world than, you know, like Horatio says, than the, I mean, you know, there's just so many different kinds of brushes, and you can have fun on their site because they carry everything, really they do, but these ruby satin silvers, these small angle ones, you will thank me forever if you when you buy one of these because it, they work so well and they, they they make you a much better artist than you thought possible, really. Okay, so this is what we've got so far. And let's take a little of that ultramarine blue as long as we're here. Let's come down on this side of the umbrella. So we're in the dark colors. And this is that far side right here. And this is that last little edge here. When I painted this, I started off with the light stuff and then I went to the dark stuff. But I figured it might be easier to paint it with the dark stuff and then go to the light stuff. Now I'm going to switch and get a little phthalo blue and white, just a tiny bit. And as I come up here, I'm going to say this is this part here is phthalo blue and white. And it's blending into that shadow. So I'm going to come around here like this where my little line is and blend this down. So that's my phthalo blue and white. I'll take a little bit more white with that. I'm going to lighten this up just a hair, wipe the brush off, and kind of Say that this is the top part of this, a little bit lighter right here, the phthalo blue, and um, and we've got the ultramarine blue down here. Okay, so if yellow and blue make green, so if I take a little um, head uh, yellow medium and a little phthalo blue, I can get, this is not the cad yellow light, this is cad yellow medium, phthalo blue. I get a pretty good green here, do you see that? So I'm going to say that this one is green. Right like that. This is this part of the umbrella. It's green. Come up here like this. And as I come in here, as I creep around the curve like that, I may make this a little darker. I might add a tiny bit more blue to it, make this a little bit more shadowy. And make it slightly darker in here like that. And keep this at an angle. All right. And then I'm going to take a little more yellow. And I'm going to just come around here like this and then make this a little light green, kind of a little light green edge, like that. little tiny light green edge. And if you want to, just tap it. Tap it if you need to, just a little light green edge there. Okay. Then dark blue and green, the very, very darkest on the inside. So this is almost like a... Oh, almost like a phthalo blue on the inside here. It's coming on the inside of this shadow or fold. This is where you can make your lines thin. See how you've got this nice thin line because we made it fat and then we skinned it up. And don't forget this is straight up and down here, this little area here, straight up and down. Okay. And I might, I'm tempted to Bring that over a little bit, but I don't think it matters. I think it's probably okay. Okay, so then that's that's our green. Let's take a little yellow now, and uh, right here on the edge, while it's still wet, let's just blend in a nice yellow 
edge right here, light yellow. This is still wet. There, see? So now we've got the the dark blue, and then we've got this, this sort of um, little edge here. Okay, now, at this point, we've done as much as we can before we had to rinse the brush, really clean it. Now, once you're... The reason I usually start off with light colors is that it's easier to go dark than it is light. So when I'm talking about rinsing the brush, you're talking about touching the bottom of your container and pinching it like this. And if you see green, do it again. That's easy, right? If you see green on your little white towel, if you can find a spot, yes, isn't it? I'm good. I don't have any green. Now, what made this interesting, when I looked at the photo of this, so this was actually a photo of this umbrella. Well, the photo... Um, this particular inside here, you could almost see, it was almost translucent. So let me show you what happens. I'm going to use cad yellow light here, and because it's a translucent color, you can see through it. I'm going to come around here on the inside with this, and then I'm going to ignore this right here, and it's here, and I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to do the first layer of this in cad yellow light yellow light. And, and because yellow is one of those colors, if you want it to show up, you must paint it over white. So then why would I do this? Well, because I wanted this shadow color, that this sort of uh, cellophane looking shadow color to show underneath, which is why I didn't paint it white at first. And this is just your cad yellow light. Um, if you had a cad yellow medium and white will work too, by the way. And even cad yellow medium and mixing white probably would be good. All right, so that's my first layer on there. And then I'm going to grab a little tiny bit of yellow oxide and come in here and then wipe it off. And say this very in, inside part right here, I'm going to say is cad yellow, uh, you know, yellow oxide with the, the light on top here. Okay. There. Now that's all I'm going to do with this one for now. You see it's very pretty bright. And this is the kind of thing where you can layer it. You can add another layer later. I'm going to say that this is our, make sure you get these angles right here. This is all we're going to do to this. and come right up to the chalk area. Okay. Right up here like that. Say so there's our, that's our, that, that first fold. Now we haven't, we haven't really shaded it perfectly, but we will. Okay, so we're going to let that dry. And rather than take the moment to dry it, let me just show you what happens if you put a little yellow oxide on this all by itself. Right in the front, I'm going to put, not yellow oxide, but cad yellow medium. Now, did you see the difference between the colors? Can you see it? It's not a bright yellow. I'm just going to wipe that off. I wanted you to see that because there's a difference when you're trying to do something like this. I'm just going to wipe that off. Okay. Um, this cad yellow light is just really an interesting color. It, it just almost glows. So, you know... I don't mention all these things all the time because I know everybody's got a budget and you can't be buying everything at the art store, though that certainly is fun. But then you got to remember what you had. I got to, got to laugh at my friend uh, Caitlin who comes and takes lessons from me. She she's practically got a truckload. Every time she sees a color, she buys it. I said, Caitlin, how do you even know what you have anymore? Wouldn't it be just easier to just take the moment and learn to mix all these things? Why right, why do we have all of these? And she she likes to travel with her paints, and she went to, to I guess somewhere in Colorado to take a workshop from someone. And she says, I'm trying to narrow it down to like 25 paints. I said, seriously, did you look at my list? Do you pay any attention in class? Is anybody paying attention to me at all? Why do you have all those things? Well, she says, I just like having all the colors. But you come back with paintings that don't have all the colors. So I think it's just dead weight you're carrying. Personally, my feeling is dead weight. Okay, so now we're going to leave this alone. This can be drying. And now we're going to take some cad, some cad red medium and some uh, cad yellow medium, and we're going to make an orange color like that. And then we're going to add, then we're going to come over here all by itself, and using the same dirty brush, we're going to make another orange with more yellow, so make it a little bit lighter like that. So we've got two colors. So we're going to start with our light, lightest color. We come in here like this, and again, we're not painting this white. We haven't painted this white yet, and I want to show you when that when you need to paint it white. Now look, even though I'm doing that, do you see that that's really not going to cover well, is it? Can you see that it won't? 
So let's just stop for a minute, get the white paint out. Let's just take a moment, get the white out, and we're going to paint this section white. Even I'm just going over it with the, co the color. It doesn't really matter. We have to have enough titanium to cover up the background. All right, I'm going to show you why I did it, because sometimes you want this translucent look, and sometimes you don't. And if you don't, you want any of these bright colors to show up. It has to be white. So there you go. Like that. So some of you have read our newsletter that know I'm going to be taking a cruise here in October. Like October. And with a couple of good friends from California. And we were trying to get on the, their website today and log in. So we could, you know, put all the information. We we booked this in May, and this now is two weeks to the cruise, and we're just now getting on there to put it in. And we spent, Joe and I spent, oh, I don't know, a good hour this morning trying to get logged on. Something so simple. And I want you to know that I have great sympathy for, you know, oh, look, they, they asked for a user's name. I don't remember giving them a user name. I think, is that my email? Is that my name? Is that my last name? And, and, and my friend Joe, she couldn't, she just says, I don't know how you got on. I said, I don't know either, but I don't think I can get back. You know, I don't know how I did it. And so finally she had to call up the guy that we got the cruise from, and he had to walk her through it. Now, if you think that that's good customer service, I want you to know that we offer that kind of customer service at our on our website, gingercooklive.gallery. We do. John Little, you know, the guy on the other end of the phone, I'm going to volunteer him here, he does that for you guys. He he sends you new password recoveries, and he and then two and three in the morning he's recovering passwords for people, and I don't want you to feel bad if it happens to you because um, it happens. Stuff like this happens. Okay, let's go back to some white. Let's do this one over here. Let's skip one. It, it happens where you you know you think you're logged on and then you can't remember. So if you're a member of my Ginger Cook Live like Art Academy, my first thing is to write your password. Oh, what a concept! Write it down on the computer somewhere, a piece of tape, so that you know it. And you're, you, because you have to have your username every time and and your password. And we had one lady write us and say, I don't know why you made this so complicated. You have my sympathy, really. And after today, particularly, you, you have my sympathy. We're not trying to make it complicated, but there's the way these computers, the, the websites are set up, okay? There's a way that, um, you know, you have to build a website, and then there's a computer program. The way this is set up, if you lost your password, the computer sends you a temporary one that's ridiculous. I mean, we know it, but that's what it does. We can't stop that. We're sorry. And then what you're supposed to do is not keep that one forever. You're supposed to go and um, and then go into log in and then change it to something that you like, like, you know, spot my dog or whatever it is, right? Spot, spot one for your dog or so, so make it simple for you and then write it down. But I have to say that, you know, when I was logging on to try and get on this cruise site, we didn't do that. I, I got great advice. I was just like I practice what I preach here. Somehow we managed to do all this and we didn't um we didn't write it down what we'd done. And of course it was only like a few seconds, so I thought I could remember a little bit longer than I did. I mean it's just not long, right? But I and then suddenly I'm, I'm thrown off the site and I'm thinking, how do I get back? How do I get back? So I want you to know that I think that John Little makes some of the, that we have some of the best customer service everywhere. See what I'm doing here with the white? Can you guys kind of see it? Now I'm going to kind of rinse my brush. And uh, this almost looks green, doesn't it? Because it's almost picking up this color over here. So let's get a little, let's get a little titanium white. Let's do our next one. Here, like this, and then we'll dry this and keep going. That was funny today. She was just, she was just thinking, well, and we have meetings. John and I have meetings and try to figure out simple ways for people to be able to get on the computer and do stuff. We talk about that. And there's just certain things that have to be there because of the way the, 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 the nature of the beast. That being said, I have one whole little laptop computer, the Microsoft computer that I use for playing games. Can't get on it anymore. Can't get in it anymore. Doesn't recognize any password I've ever heard of or me. It never now it claims it's never heard of me. <laughs> Just <laughs> I love stuff like this. So fun. 
I tell you what, when they offer a chip in my an implant in my arm, I'll be the first one to get it. <laughs> I don't want to have to remember anything. Here's my arm. I want on. Okay, so see where I left a little space here, and I'm going to come over here like this and do this one. And I'm going to add a little tiny bit of cad yellow medium and white to this, just so that I can differentiate the two of these, so I know that this is slightly different. Now this is a, an underpainting, like this. We're going to come up like this. This is our next, this is our last umbrella thing. And it, it all chalk wipes off tomorrow. Please don't try to do it tonight. Even if you've really dried it, just give it overnight to dry. All right, see how the umbrella is kind of going in now? You kind of see how we're doing that? And at some point we have to sort of dry it. Which is good. Which is excellent. So, all right. So then we said that this is what this is what we've got so far. Okay, and I'm gonna come back here. So, oh, I'm not gonna dry it yet. I'm gonna come back here with some light color like this. And then I want to. I want this a little lighter. I'm gonna come around like this. Just like that before I dry it. And same thing here. I want this a little lighter. This is dried enough where I can get away with this. A little bit lighter on the edge here. You thought this was going to be hard to do. Um, the question, the why I didn't paint white under the cad yellow light was I wanted this to look, this color of the photo was sort of, um, um, I'm going to do another coat of, of that, but I wanted this, a little bit of the dark to show underneath, or I could have, I could have painted white underneath this, but I didn't because I wanted some of the shadow color to show through. And I'm going to give a second set, I'm going to do a second coat of cad yellow light. Now look what happens. And it has this sort of, it, it's a different color when I do it this way than if I painted it over white. Let's see, I'm going to take this like this and say that there's this, and then I'm going to come this way. And then I'm going to take a little tiny bit of cad yellow medium right here on this side, and I want this side to be a bit darker right in here, like this. So uh, this was layered without it. Uh, because of, there was a, the translucent nature of this, and I might just add a tiny bit of white as it as I paint it right here in the front. There was a little bit of a light streak right here, and you can still see a little bit of the dark underneath. And I and I was trying for that effect, but if you didn't like that effect, you could certainly paint it white. But I, I wanted that sort of effect there, and I and I still have to get this darker. Let me take a little yellow oxide right here, and I just I need a little shadow right here. And that gives me a better shadow. And the same thing on the inside of here, too. See, I have that little kind of dark shadow under here. Like here, it's kind of dark shadow, and I kind of wanted that. Okay. So, should we dry it? What else could we do before drawing? John wants to know. Inquiring minds want to know. Okay, let's take a little bit of light green, kind of white and yellow and in a green color, okay, a little bit of white, let's take and make a light green color. Let's just come around here like this and pinch the brush so that you've got an edge. Paint on both sides and I'm just going to tap in this light, a little more white. Tap in this light edge right here, tap, 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 that's sort of this little, there, this little light green edge and then over this white here. So sort of a light green edge. There we go. And wipe your brush and then come along here and lighten this edge up a little bit. Just wipe the brush off and then add a little bit of a light highlight right here like that. Okay. To this part of the umbrella. And um, I'm going to take the blue here, ultramarine blue, and I want to I'm going to make it even a little bit more of a, a slant here. I'm going to widen this just a bit right here to this one. Okay, so widen that. All right, that's good. 
Now, what else could we do? Uh, John, we pretty much have to dry it. Was there some reason why we didn't want to dry it? Okay, we're going to dry it. Any questions before we dry? Okay. All right, John, John's got them all. All right, here we go. Take very long to dry. I mean, just it dries really quick now because we're we're starting to layer the paint on. I'm rinsing the brush. Now we're gonna go. We're gonna go in with those nifty orange colors we made before. They've all dried up in your plate. Remember those. So let's just come in here to this one. Let's get a little more cad red medium right next to the center of this yellow one. We're gonna take a little cad red medium like that. This is where the blending comes in. We're gonna get a little more of this light orange color and. Uh, Start uh, working on our right side of the umbrella here. So we want it kind of dark down the center here like that. You want it kind of dark there. And then wipe the brush and just blend that out real quick. And as we come over here to the, we're going to take a little white and yellow. As we come over here to the um, center, right, right in here, it's lighter. So now we've got to take the, the, we've got an orange and we've got a light yellow that we've got to deal with. So here we go. And you can always come back and put some light yellow on top too, but here we go. So here's this sort of blending. So it's lighter on the edge. Right, like that, much lighter on the edge. And then I can come back, really, honestly, when this is dry, and add a little more yellow and dry brush it on too. That's the other way you can blend is dry brush on a color. It doesn't have to be all wet on wet. Now the inside of this is pretty much done the same way, but it's a little darker, like in here. This is the inside. Okay, I'm going to say that there's the inside of this one. Like that. Okay. And then we're going to go darker again. We're going to say this is the next one. So this is cad red medium right next to it. See how much nicer it shows up than what's going over white. Let's just come around here like that, just kind of outline that. Now we'll get some yellow on the brush and just sort of, you know, make an orange color right there as we mix. Okay. Just kind of, you can either blend on the canvas. I see people spend hours mixing a color with a palette knife. They'll be going, doop, 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 doop for out. And what are you doing? Mixing color. Just grab some color and get it on the canvas and then see what happens. Okay, so there's there's that one. And then the inside of this is again the same thing. It's kind of a darker orange with a little bit of a lip. So make it a little bit darker right there. Wipe it off and move that around. Okay, so far so good. Yeah, and then this last one here is um, well, we got two, but this last one is um, is a little bit of magenta and a little bit of um, cad red medium together. Those two almost mixed together, and um, a little bit more cad red. And there we go. There's this one. You want to go right next to this. Like that. Now I'm going to put a little yellow with that. Just to, This has a slight orange tint to it, so you can put a tiny bit of yellow with this. Come around here like that. Say this is your next color. Now look, you're, you could paint these any color. Like, just kind of keep it to the rainbow, but you could paint these any old way. This is just, I mean, I think this is really pretty. This is a real umbrella. We're not making this up. This was a real umbrella. So you could paint these any way like that. Sure could. And no reason why not. Take a little more yellow here on the inside. This is a little bit oranger on the inside. Like that. A little yellow on the end. 
Okay. Oh, it's getting pretty, isn't it? Come on. That's kind of nice. Let me just kind of show you. It's getting there. Yeah. I mean, once you get this on a rose, it's, it's tricky. It's not that tricky. Then we're going to take a little magenta and white, a kind of a pink color, wipe it off, come up here and lighten this edge right here because that's dried. Make this edge a little pinker. Then a little more magenta, like that. Wipe it off and then just sort of melt those together. We're doing a little bit lighter pink here on the edge. And, um, all right, you see I'm kind of lightening it up in here. And I can take a little bit of, if I wanted to brighten this up, I might take a little cad red back here. Could have used napo crimson too. And just brighten it up just to here, here. So it wasn't so dark. Bring that into the darker color. So this is, acrylics is all about layers. It's never the first color you put down or the second. It's, the, it's like the third and the fourth color. And you just keep playing with it till, till you're happy with it. There's a little more white here. Uh huh. So the question is, am I putting my brush in water at any time? I, I rinse it between colors. Yeah, I'm rinsing it between colors. You know, sure, if your brush is drying out, just, just wet it and then wipe it off. That's, that makes total sense to me. She wants to know if I dip my brush in water. Um, I'm rinse, I do rinse it between colors. Okay, okay, I'm definitely doing that. And I almost want some red here. This is funny, all these colors we're using. I, I'm going to, I didn't um, have any red out for, for various reasons. One was I was chunking the red because it's down to the last of it. I'm fishing it out of it. Let me grab it. Okay. Uh, this sometimes naphthal crimson, that's your pure red. I'm going to put a little of that out. This You need so little of this, but let's just, just grab some pure red here. Put it on here. Sometimes just that makes a difference. Let's just let's just come up here like that with some red, and then back here to the yeah, and then take a little bit of the magenta and the purple, bring that in there darker, and a little bit of the ultramarine blue, I guess, around here like that. Sometimes just a little bit of bright color. This is a painting that's all about color, for sure. Okay. And I'm going to just lighten this up around here like that. And come back with the blue under here. Now, this is where you want to make sure that you've got it kind of nice and dark in here. And I'm going to just make sure I've got this going like that. Kind of these scallop things. Like that on the umbrella. Now, I'll take just some white paint like this and come straight down here like this with my stem here. You've got to center that under here, right? Okay, now let's take a little purple, causing purple. Let's come up here next to this one and just kind of blend that into our background. Right, kind of straighten up our um, Stuff. Now this is too dark. Can you see the difference between this handle and this one? It's too dark, right? But this is what we got the first time around. So then if we want to lighten that up, okay, this is the trick. If you want to lighten that up, just make a bright orange color. Start with yellow. How you bit of, uh, well, let's just do magenta. I'll show you what that does. A little bit of yellow and magenta. That's a pretty orange, okay? And wipe off your brush, and then come here sideways like this. Just come here sideways. This is this is what we call dry brush technique. Uh, just put the paint on one side of the brush like that. Wipe it off. Now spread it around. This is just like the wet on wet technique, but now you very lightly blend that into the brown. Now this is dry brushing blending. So the brown is totally dry, and this is what you're doing. You see that? You might take a little, you don't, it doesn't take a lot of paint, but we're going to say that, let me just turn it this way. We're going to say that there's the bottom part of this umbrella like this. I'm going to wipe the brush off and then I'm just going to blend that out. 
Okay. So this is what you, this is definitely what you would call dry brushing. Um, it's a great it's a great trick. Here's a little bit more of an orange. You can add a little if you want to brighten this up a bit right here. Come across like that. Barely touch it. Now, look at the difference in the in the handle. That's you, you learned last night. We talked all about wet on wet blending with these with these colors, but this is dry brush blending. All right. And um, if you really wanted this straight, I would have taped it, but that's okay. So that's dry brush blending, and that works too. So there's a combination of these things. Let's just pull our stick down like that. Okay, our umbrella. All right, we're getting there, don't you think? I think we're getting there. Yeah. So we're going to rinse it now. Here's here's the, let's do the same thing. Let's talk a little bit about dry blush blending. So here's white and cad cad yellow light with a little white in it. And I'm going to just do that on the front of this right here, like this. This is the second coat, third now. I'm going to come down here and lighten it up right here on the front right there, like that. Lighten this up. And then I'll do the same thing. I'll come around here on the edge. Probably a lot more titanium white. And I'm going to come around the edge and I want a light edge around my top of the umbrella. Let me just here's the deal. When the paint's like this, you I have to flatten my paint out on my brush. This is I in order for the brush to, to behave properly, the brush paint has to be flat. Both sides, okay. So now I'm going to come around like this. This is just titanium, and just tap it on here. And there's my white edge on the top of this umbrella. It's going this way, okay, like that. And um, here's a little bit more titanium right here, just right there. Just going to put a little right there. Bring that down, kind of as a highlight. Okay. Now, as long as I'm into that, I've got titanium. Cad yellow light right here. What would happen if we did that? A little bit of cad yellow light right here. So a little bit of the paint dry. Now this is the dry brushing technique, where in other words, everything's dry. Wipe the brush off, kind of sideways, blend that out, almost like you're using chalk and scribble that in. This is a technique you'll see me, see me do very often. This sort of dry brushing, where you come back and you add a color. You either go up or down in the light on a color and how light you're going to make something. Like for instance, I know that I want a little bit of a light edge coming around the inside of this. I'll wipe the brush off and then just sort of blend that in. I think I want more cad yellow though than the, than the cad yellow light. Then go back to the orange, come next to it. And there's that. I want a little bit darker down here. Okay. Sure, go ahead. You can just see me adding color. I'm adding some dark now. Dry brushing it in. See this? See the dark? So I'm adding a little shadow. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. What's the difference between me and Cinnamon's paintings? Well, size. He does a lot bigger ones than I'm doing. To me, that would be the biggest difference. No pun intended, right? Cinnamon and I have a rule, and, and some, we have a rule, and i got to tell you this right now. She's, if, if somebody's, you know, you get personal art coaching from me, but if it's one of Cinnamon's paintings, you don't. And she and I are very careful to give each other a lot of space. Um, Cinnamon has, is, is a wonderful artist, and, and she is painting for the beginning artist. Her goal, as far as I can see, see is the goal is to get people who've never painted before and teach them to paint, and she does that. And that's and she designs these paintings that are very happy, and they're um, and uh, and she she makes them where even if you you know I'm trying to use I'm I'm encouraging everybody to go out and buy the expensive paint. I want you to go out not buy student grade paint. I want you to go out and buy um, you know professional acrylics because I you know because I'm teaching you um, you know how to use professional acrylics. And and we, we go from from very, very basic beginning strokes. And the reason we do the basics is I'd like you to be able to hop onto a museum somewhere 
and know how to paint something well enough for it, that you could paint it. You may not invent it, but if you saw it, you could make it. Now, that's a pretty worthy goal, but if you look at that, let me just show you as an example, and we'll back out. That's a good example. Cinnamon, I don't believe, would ask anybody to tackle a painting like this, right? That's not what she's teaching. You know, this is not a beginning painting, but eventually, if you become a member of gingercooklive.gallery, uh, the blending technique I talked about, well, I can get you up to this. This is there's there's all levels of stuff, and then the other the other major thing between the two of us is that cinnamon is, is you know is doing this um, on on um, on YouTube and on all her artwork is on YouTube. And we have majority of our art lessons on our personal website on a subscription basis that comes with personal art coaching. I mean, if you consider what a regular lesson with me would be in person, if you're talking about twenty four ninety five dollars ninety five cents a month regular subscription. That's nothing if we didn't, for art coaching, if we didn't give you one painting. And we give you over 190 lessons, plus you can send me the picture. So I would say that those are some of the main differences is what we're teaching. But um, but I'm telling you what, Cinema's got some great teaching techniques, and she's got some basic stuff that's, and, and you can really learn a lot from her too. I mean, look, all the artists on, on YouTube, we all have different ways of showing something to you. And maybe we're all telling you to blend, and if I show you 15 ways to blend, one of them is going to going to maybe zero in. You're going to go, oh, yeah, that's good, right? Well, it's the same thing with, with so many things. There's a lot of different ways to paint something. Um, I know that when I was trying to figure out how to um, do something, I think I was trying to, when I first started YouTube, figuring out how to do annotations. I typed in annotations on the YouTube search, and I went through about uh, 15 people looking for someone that, could explain annotations to me. They all were explaining it. Everybody was doing a beautiful job of explaining it. But I wanted the person I could um, that explained it in a way that I understood. And I, and I listened to everybody, and I found one person, and I played their video over and over again. Okay, And I think that that's kind of the thing. You know, Cinnamon, I think, is marvelous the way she explains you know, how you do things and, 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 and her party and everything. But we're very supportive of each other. And in and, and the art, and we show each other the paintings that we're doing, and um and again, uh, she's happy for me, so she doesn't have to take care of me in my old age, right? This is a <laughs> go, mom, right? Keep going, mom. Yeah. Anyway, um, I would say, did you think that was a good example of what was different, John, in our in our artwork? Yeah. She, you know, we we do a lot of different stuff, and um. The other day, I called her up and asked her how to do something. I said, listen, I'm trying to do this. What do you think I should do? And we had a big discussion. I said, send me some examples of how you think that ought to be done. And I'll tell you what, if I need to know anything about the Internet or Facebook, Cinnamon. Cinnamon is the queen of of knowing all YouTube stuff. I'm telling you what. She is an encyclopedia of YouTube. And you know what she did? Now, I'm, I'm going to give her credit. Nobody gives her credit for this, but I remember when we talked about it in the kitchen. She thought it would be nice what happens with artists on YouTube is that we're a tiny, even though you don't know this, we're tiny. We're nothing compared to the people that are doing makeup or the or the or the singers or that stuff. YouTube, you know, you know, we're practically a, a footnote in the, in YouTube, okay? And so she thought it would be nice. And most of us, you know, we appreciate you guys sharing our artwork, all of us. And you share it, and you comment. You can't know how much we appreciate that. And all of us do. All the artists do because what happens is we're just shouting down a tunnel, okay? We're shouting down a tunnel. If we don't hear back from anybody, we have no idea what anybody's doing, okay? And um, that being said, uh, Cinema started something called the Creative Art Collaboration, and she invited artists and, and, and anybody that was doing art, like artsy, crafty things, started that about, a, what was that, about over, a little over a year ago. We started with 10 artists. I don't know how many they have now, but it's a, it's a it's a private group of artists and on YouTube that that can ask questions of each other and get moral support when they're having problems. Like for instance, one day you look up and you have no subscribers. The, the, the YouTube says all your subscribers went, and then you could, they they'll write and say, "Did that happen to you? Yeah, it was a glitch. Okay, don't panic. You don't you still have subscribers. They messed up." You, you, she started that, and she just had a lot of help in doing it. But that was cinnamon. I thought that was pretty fantastic. But, uh, you know, the, the, the she's built a community, I would say. She's really gone out of her way to build a community. And, and that's what we're all trying to do is, be, you know, you know, 
we're all artists here, and we're this little tiny voice. We're the mouse that yeah, squeaked kind of out here in the YouTube channels. Okay, what we're going to do next is um, uh, take some um, mixing mic. Remember we talked about that? And I think I'm going to do it on a separate plate here because I'm kind of out of room. And what I want to do now is I want to come around with some mixing white. This is looking kind of cute, right? Now, there's a rule in art. Please remember, wherever there's a light, there's a dark. So here's some mixing white. Brush is flat. I'm just going to come up here like this. And remember how we did some squiggles in the beginning? I'm just going to squiggle some more stuff here. Sit like this, kind of hold the brush flat, kind of wiggle it back and forth. And I'm just squiggling sort of there and then, and then angle like this, a little bit of mixing white. Mixing white is very transparent. Let's come over here too and do that on this side so your umbrella shows up. And this is just sort of a dark, stormy day. It's sort of sitting up against the glass. And uh, let's erase the chalk a little bit here. Say so here's the, we're going to do a lot. We're, and I didn't do anything, you know, too technical. We wanted to keep it fairly simple, but still, still give the feeling of a storm, which is why we're doing this on an angle. Maybe it's a stormy day of some kind. And we're all getting into our umbrellas. Like that. So we're just saying. So now, you see how that sort of brought it out a little bit now? And the same thing down here because we've got, now you see the blue because we lighten this up. Like that. It's something we're doing. And then our last thing is to um, put those little, those little pointy things here. These things. These things and uh huh. Uh, this is a good question. I like this question, John. I like this question. There's the question of the day. Woohoo! Question of the day. Is it easier to? Is it easier to dry brush with a stiff brush or a soft brush? That's a good question. Who would know those? I certainly didn't tell you anything about it. That's a great question. So what did our, who's the person that asked that question? Ooh. Paige, okay, Paige, what you have won. Uh, you go to our website, let me find it, gingercooklive.gallery over here. And you can either, you've either won seven days of uh, art lessons um, from us, and you just write and say, I'd love seven days of art lessons, or or you, we have over 20 downloadable videos that you can um, access over there, and you can you can you can tell us which one of those I want to paint the chimpanzee or the, the wild rose, or um, you know, maybe I want the horse or the little girl, whatever you want, and we will send you the code for that so you can go access that, and also, this even includes the village that we're doing. Everybody's seen this part of the village, but as you know, we have, uh, I think, eight, eight, uh, you know, six anyway, six more village uh, videos. So you could access one of those. Look at that. So what a thing to win. That's a great question. And everybody says the question is, again, Ginger, what's the question? The question is, do you do, when you're dry brushing, would a soft or a hard brush work, stiff brush work better? And the answer is a stiffer brush. A soft brush won't do much for you. And that's why I like those ruby satin silvers, because even when they've worn out a bit, and they do wear out, you know, they get a little frayed, like, I don't know, can you see it under the camera? Uh, let's see if I put something white behind it, can you see it? They get a little frayed after a while, they do, because you wear them out. You can still dry brush with them. And, um, and I can kind of, you know, give you examples. It's great, you can still do that with them. They're wonderful to be able to do that with. So, yes, um, you want a little stiffer brush. But so now you've learned how to do those those small circles uh, using wet paint. Try doing one, you know, dry brushing it on and getting the same effect because it can work either way. It can do either way. Now what we need is um, we're going to put these little um, these little they're little straighty things up here like this. That, that what your umbrella attaches to straighty things. Not much of a word here. What can I show you? Let's see here. Okay, so. Here we go, we're gonna go straight up with one of these. Oh, I'm just gonna use the brush. All right, so I'm gonna take um, some white paint, I guess. And uh, for me, it's just, it, it, it's gonna be easier. Just do a white, little bit of white. Here, here we go, a little bit of white paint, like that. Here's one here, here's one here. Straight up and down. Then we had a couple back here like that, okay? I think we had one here, okay? 
this, and we had one here, okay. So then I have to dry that real quick. You don't have to mute for this, just to dry. And I want a pointy brush. I want a little brush you can put to a point. And I want my darkest color here, which is going to be purple, like that, my darkest color. And then I want to come up next to that. Usually I ha highlight next to that, and I'm going to make a very straight line, a little little ball on top. Straight line and a little ball. So I'm kind of splitting the difference on those. I'm kind of cutting them in half and putting the, the ball. I thought it might be easier to do that this way than the other, but I don't know. if t Ten to one half does the other. You could either done it dark or light. A little ball on top of here like that. Okay, and um, then I'll go back into the white paint and paint a little. These were actually, th this was some of the most challenging with these stupid little things that stuck up from the umbrella because they're hard to show up here. I need it. It's a little, put some white back. I'm losing this like that. Oh, one in the middle too. John says, yeah, here's one in the middle. I missed this one. Thank you. I missed this one. Here, let's try it again. Here's one in the middle, and we'll say that there's the ball. This is a little round ball tip on top. I have trouble. These things want to come out of their little slots on my umbrella. I'm just having to shove those little wiry things back in. Okay. But trust me, it rains in Houston. When it rains, it's really a challenge. Okay, so we're going to come back here like this with the dark. This would almost be easier to do with a pen, quite frankly, with a, with a Sharpie and pull with the brush on these because we're doing such a small picture. That's okay. I don't miss my paint here. So it flows a little bit better. Okay, there we go. Now, a little dark one here. I don't know. These are not showing up very well. Okay, so you know why they're not showing up very well? Why is that, Ginger? Why aren't they showing up very well? Because I don't have enough light behind them. So if you don't have enough light behind them, then they're not going to show up at all. So I say, let's put some light behind them. Let's, here, let's just do this. Let's put some light behind them, like here. Let's get some light behind it, back in here with a little mixing white. Let's get some white here. Blend that in. You see, I'm going to just sort of blend that into the thing. The same thing here. I need some light behind this thing because it's just not showing up. Wherever there's a light, there's a dark. So if you can't see something, you've got to either darken it or lighten up the thing behind it. Now those show up, and I bet these will show up now too. And the same thing here. I can lighten up that blue a bit back here just to here um, where this one has to go, like right in here. If I were to lighten up this, just a hair with a smaller brush, like this, and let's take a little phthalo blue. Okay, not too much. All right, if I were to lighten that up a little bit right in here, then this one would show. I'm going to just paint that one over again. Don't be afraid. If something isn't working, stop and figure out why it isn't working, and then take steps to fix it. How's that? So if you're not if you're not getting the results you want, don't don't, don't panic. Just say, that's not working for me. Now, I've lost this here. This one here, this green right here, this was a, we need to make this a lighter green while that's drying. This right here, this yellow. How, how hard is this? All right, here's some yellow right here. We lost the green right here, coming in here like that, of this umbrella right there. There we go. So here we go, like that. All right, so let's blend that out. So, so you can see the green again. Now I should be able to put these others in. I should be able to take the dark right here. This should show up enough to put this. Yeah, like that. This should show up. Oh, they do now. Look at that. A little ball on top. A little ball on top. And then they can have the highlight with that. Some sort of little pointy brush. Some sort of little pointy brush, which is... Just this one. I guess we're stuck with this one. Where did the pointy brush go? Hmm. 
And you know, years ago, people used to ask me, you know, because I've been a professional artist for, you know, 40 years. People say, do you ever give art lessons? Sometimes, but not. They said, well, why don't? And I said, because, you know what, it's like Groundhog Day. I want to teach everybody everything at one time. I don't want to have to repeat myself. When I tell I want to teach the, literally, I want to teach the world of paint once. I want to just explain this one time. I don't want every day to have to, every year to have to explain this whole thing all over again. And, it, and what I love about YouTube is in our art lessons, it'll let you do that. I, 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 every video is different. There's no two things. Not, I, mean, I may show you different ways to do something, but it's all, um, it, we're, we're all doing this um, differently, and everybody can see it. You know, but wonderful to be able to do this like this. I have to tell you, I'm going to outline this a little bit, do a little darker edge. On these back ones, that this is actually connected back here like that. Okay, and let's take a little bit of light. So here, any questions, Sean? I'm pretty good with that. I'm gonna just come up here like that and lighten this. You know, this is, would I be willing to do a tour of my brushes and painting supplies in the future? Um, yeah. Yeah, because um, when, when you mean like a visual tour? Oh, you mean like in my studio? Oh, a walkthrough in my studio? Oh, that's different. Oh, I don't know, John. You'd have to clean up. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> that's, I'd, I'd have to... St this is a once a year plan. I mean, I'm telling you what. I, I wanted this curve more. Did you guys see this? I'm changing this. I'm going to put a, I want this more turquoise and I want to clean up. You know how to make turquoise? Stay a little blue and white and a little yellow. Yeah? Stay a little blue, white, and a little yellow. Makes a beautiful turquoise green color, blue color. And I wanted this a little more turquoise right here. Yes, see there? And I wanted it. This needed to, this needed to have a more of a sag to it than I had it. There we go. Oh, better. Look at that. Don't be afraid to go back and, and play with your colors and then blend that. See? Blend that back in. And then take the white. And then come on up here like that and give that a little light edge. Okay. This is just a little bit of a little bit of a scooped edge here like that. Um, you know, I'll tell you what, we've got a I don't know about a tour. I have to think about that. No time soon. It doesn't, it doesn't sound soon, right? It doesn't sound soon. We, we just got a whole bunch of new camera equipment from Cinnamon, who's upgraded. And uh, so we've got a whole bunch of camera equipment. And what I want to try and do with that is being able to shoot some full videos. And so that's Studio A is, 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 is fine, but that's Studio B where John is, okay? And we want to, we want to shoot some... Um, Full, full videos, and, and, and we have to set that up. And that means rearranging the room, because I hold regular art classes there, too, during the week, on weekends. All right, there's our umbrella, you guys. What do you think? Is that kind of fun? Oh, I forgot this one. Wait a minute. Let me get this one. Where's my pen? i tell you what. Why are we doing this? Let's just use a pen. It's just it's dumb. Let's, just, let's get the pen here going here like this. There we go. There's my little pen here, a little light highlight with a pen. I don't know why I'm sweating the small stuff here when I've got a pen. Works just fine for these little things. And then this has to be blue. That center thing, this has to be light blue and white. Okay, this one here, this our little center thing here has to be blue. To differentiate it, it's really metal anyway, this little thing that comes down here, to differentiate it from the other things, which are supposed to be dark, like that. Here, let's just take a dark pen, the oil painting Sharpie pen, and darken this on this side. I'm telling you what, I'm just over this brush experience trying to get this to work. A little bit. Oh, 
highlight between um well we maybe we need more highlights you know um we can we I'm not against highlights what could we do here we need another little little highlight here right on this one Make sure that my brush is clean. When you start using all these colors, and we've got to um, just start with white a little bit. Okay, we've got between the green and the yellow. There's this one that's coming back this way, right, like that, right? And the green, like that. And I could even make that darker. I want to make that darker right here next to it. Let's just get this skinnier. It's got a little fat right here. You can always come. I love acrylics. You see, when it dries, you can make adjustments. That's what I would tell you. You can come back and make a little adjustment like that and kind of carve out something. And if you're, if, you know, you can sit there and say, I know this has to be a dark straight up and down line here, right? And I'm going to just make this a little smaller. Or I'm going to come up here and do something dark next to this, this right here. I'm going to make sure this is nice and dark right there. And you, you've got some real advantages. Hmm? On this pen that I use, yeah, if you can paint over it if you make a mistake with it, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you sure can. Yeah, you gotta let it dry first. In fact, it's not very water. The one you want, the one you want is the oil, oil painting Sharpie white pen and the oil painting Sharpie dark pen. Those are the best because they, they, they really dry instantly and they're really cool. I mean, they're, they're really, I think, I like those as about as good as anything. The, and, and this one is okay for fine lines and stuff, and you can, it's never as permanent. I mean, permanent in the sense that you could move it with water, you have to be kind of careful, where those others don't. Um, but I like the fine line to it. If you paint it with the oil pen, sure, you can paint over that. I think oil's kind of loose. You want it, it's, it's a loose term. I don't think it's, you know, you can paint over it, no problem. And what's, what's interesting, I think I want to, carve this out a little bit, kind of skinny this up right here. See right in here? I want to skinny this umbrella up because I didn't have it thin enough. So I'm going to just come back with some dark paint and just do that. See, just these little things that you can do to kind of, you know, fix fix stuff is, is kind of cool, right? Um, Sharpie, if you ever go up on the it's internet. One time I spent some time up on the internet with Sharpie, and they make they make pens that can, that can, can write on the moon and uh, you know, 600 feet underwater, and um, that the, the Sharpie is the king of all pen things, all things pen, I have to say. And they're, they're, they used to call their oil paint, painting pens uni pens. They were called unis. And now they're just called Sharpie oil painting pens. And this is still wrong. Gosh, how could I get this wrong three times? All right, we're going to fix it. All right, I'm fixing it. This goes like this. Sorry. This goes like that. I don't know why we did it wrong three times, but we did. But see, it just doesn't matter, does it? Because then we just take the paint and fix it. Here. All right, now. See? Better. That had to scoop like that. You can see that it did. Okay? And I just didn't have it like that, so that's fine. I didn't have it. Oh, I like that bright blue. What was that? That would be pretty in here, wouldn't it? It's in that bright blue color. And then put a little, yeah, that little dark here under our... Make sure we've got this dark in here like this under our handle. And there there we go. I think we did pretty good with that. And again, you can come back and play with some more colors. Um, you could go over this several times if you wanted to. But you can kind of see how we're how we're painting it, I think. I keep looking at that going, what else could I do? And I think that's it. Any more questions? Because we've kind of taken up everybody's time for an hour and a half showing you how to do this. Well, this wasn't fast, was it? It's not fair. You know, stuff like this just takes time. It took me some time today, you know, the other day to paint it. I just want this a little darker right here. Okay, and the same thing here. I want this a little darker. You, you go back up and you just sort of play with this a little bit. and want a little bit darker right there. Maybe a little bit darker. Where's that red color going? Yeah, see, what would happen if you add a little bit of red? Just a little bit of dark right there. It doesn't take much sometimes to... Um, and then blend it out. Just dry brush it out. Then when you've got the hang of this now, then dry brush it out like that. And then kind of an accent color. The same thing with this. So I think I'll move this one. And just we're going to keep this as our keeper. We'll get this out of the way. 
And um, uh, oh, tomorrow, you guys, I want to let you know, tomorrow we're going to be painting this, our little um, a, a garden scene, and we're going to use it. See the folds stuff? And we're using, um, I thought I would show you how to use a blending gel. So any kind of blending medium, if you've got one, this is a Graubacher Retarder, but any kind of blending gel, we're going to show you how to do the tablecloth using blending gel. People asked about it, so I said I would do that. And if you, it, you could do it without it, but I'm going to show you how you might use it. So this is this is tomorrow at one o'clock. This little table and kind of garden uh, area. I'm painting the backyards. I don't have. I think is what I'm doing. Um, okay, but I think this was cool, and we want to invite you to you know uh, listen. We appreciate the fact that you were on, and, and you know when you share our videos and you like and comment on the videos that we have up on YouTube and share with your friends, you know, sentiments to you, when you pass let people know what we're doing. It, it it helps all the it helps art on YouTube become more viable. You know, you know, we're a growing community and we're growing because of you guys. So we thank you very much. Now if you think you might want to watch this again, we'll just sit through this whole thing again, it's going, I just can't wait to see this again. You have to rewind now. All right, so if you were going to make this something bigger, what you do is um, um, you divide you divide it in, you know divide it in in force, you know like this is six by eight, so you know you can divide it in half and half in force, and then on a sixteen by twenty canvas do the same thing, and then just fill in the squares. Just draw you know just divide it in half, and you know draw lines across it, and and then do that on the large canvas and just make it bigger. That's pretty simple. Or, hey, you want to know the easiest way? You know, yeah, what is the easiest way? Tell us the secret. Okay, you can just uh, take your picture like this and tootle down to Quick Copy and ask them to print it out in black and white for you, whatever size you want, and then you take chalk and rub on the back of your, your print and then put it on top of your canvas and then trace around it and the chalk goes through and um, you have it any size you want. That is the fastest, simplest way, the really easy way to do that. And again, I want to encourage everybody to go back and look at the banana lesson if you haven't done that. If you haven't done this banana lesson on YouTube, this is um, this again is another one we're talking about blending. So many different ways to blend. Get this down. If get this blending business down. Um, we're doing a, a Thursday's release for Ginger Cook Live on our Ginger Cook Live is. The meditation piece, that's Thursday, and that's for our members. And again, a lot of blending in this and on the rocks. Can you see it? A lot of dry brush blending on these rocks. A lot of blending in the clouds, okay? So all these techniques, these advanced techniques, once you get these down, the painting stuff is pretty easy. I promise you, it's pretty easy. The hard part is learning how to blend. Once you got that down, mix a few colors, you're golden. Anyway, that's the Thursday release meditation which we think is kind of cool. We'll have a traceable for that for people on the website to trace that on. We don't feel like, um, uh, you know, working too hard at it to, to get it. Well, I guess I could sign this. I'll we'll do that here. Cook. Okay. I think that's our questions, John, right? Oh, you guys, thank you so much for the... Woohoo! We have 118 thumbs up. You guys, you rock. Thank you so much. This is so wonderful. This is great. We appreciate the thumbs up. We appreciate all your fabulous comments and your encouraging things and the nice things. You come over to Facebook. Ginger Cook on Facebook. is Ginger Cook 92 on Facebook. And uh, you paint this umbrella, uh, drop it off and, you know, come show me. Friend, you know, I'll friend you. And uh, let's see what you painted. Can't wait to see what you're doing. We also put our students' galleries up on uh, Pinterest. Uh, we have a student board on Ginger Cook Live, all one word on Pinterest. And that's fun. You can see what our other students are doing, and you don't have to be a member to get your stuff up. We'll put it up if we, you know, if you do something, we'll put it up if it's one of our lessons. And you, and the caveat being, you've got to send me a picture I can put up. Some of the pictures I get, you guys, which is interesting to see, but they, they're really hard to kind of put up. You know, you've got to kind of 
square the photograph the picture a little better. You guys have got all cell phones. There's really no excuse anymore. G g give us something to work with here when you're ph photographing something, okay? And if it's anything I can work with, I'll try to get it up on Pinterest for you. Everybody can. That's our bragging rights, what you guys are doing. That's your bragging rights. Look what I did. Kind of cool. We're at 122 and Sammy wants 125. He wants three more th thumbs up, you guys. Three more. And what's the question? John? Does it matter what color casted, sh casted shadow is? Well, yeah, sure it does. Of course it does. It matters. It, it matters. Um, look around your house. At shadows, and look at the color of the shadow. It depends on the light that's casting the shadow and what's it what's it reflecting. Okay, so yeah, the casted shadow makes a difference. Um, for instance, on an ocean, rocks that are wet tend to have a blue shadow, but if they're if they're um, if they're dry, they probably have more of a brown shadow. Interesting, right? Yeah, shadow colors make a difference. Maybe we'll do a, that's a good thing. Maybe we should do a thing on, on shadow colors. That, no one's ever asked that. We should do that, John. The color of shadows. But we could do that. But, um, you know, you could look, I mean, like, for instance, one of the things we do here is this is a back to basic um, lesson. And I show you that if you put a ball, this is one of the basic ones on our website, if you're painting a ball and you put the shadow lower than the ball, it makes the ball look like it's floating. But here the cylinder is, and this is sort of everything, the cylinder has a dark purple shadow, because we're all in blue light here, okay? And, and it's underneath the cylinder, so the cylinder looks like it's sitting on this platform. But the ball looks like it's floating, and so where you put the shadow makes a difference too. Mm. Shadow tells you what time of day something is too. Shadow class. Well, have to do is. Thank you for the all the likes, you guys. We reached 128. Thank you so much. You guys are great. See you soon. See you Wednesday. Sammy's jumping up and down. We'll see you. Uh, We'll see you Wednesday afternoon at 1 p.m. Central if you can make it, and we'll paint that pretty picture. It'll be great fun. Anyway, thanks so much. Good night.